By the year of 1786, the German city of Frankfurt was the official headquarters of Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Bavarian Order of the Illuminate. Trained as a Roman Catholic Jesuit, Adam Weishaupt became a protege of Ignacio López de Loyola, 1491-1556, the founder of the Society of Jesus who are known today as the Jesuits. Loyola later became the first superior general, a powerful political and spiritual force that is today known as the Black, Hidden, Pope who controls the most powerful intelligence organization in the world. In the year of 1491, San Ignacio de Loyola was born in the Basque province of Guipuzco, Spain to a wealthy family of Jewish Moranos. His first entry, as a young man, was into a Jewish Illuminati order in Spain while serving actively in the Roman Catholic Church. Wounded permanently in battle, Loyola's life turned to one of personal holiness. He went to Paris and there became a priest and in 1539, he moved to Rome where the Jesuit order was given birth. Jewish Adam Weishaupt, Jesuit trained founder of the Bavarian Order of the Illuminati. Joseph Johann Adam Weishaupt, on the other hand was born on February 6, 1748 in the city of Ingolstadt in the German state of Bavaria. His father was a professor in the University of Ingolstadt. It was in the year of 1773 that two important events happened. The young Adam now educated as a Jesuit but was raised as a secret Sabbatan Jew, broke his allegiance with the Jesuit society amazing in the same year which Pope Clement XVI dissolved the Jesuit order. Did he have inside information, we do not know. Within three years, in the year of 1776, a few months before the American Revolution and the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the Bavarian Order of the Illuminate was formed. What little is known was that Adam Weishaupt came from a Jewish family that had converted to Roman Catholicism during the same era after the Messianic revival of Shabbatai Tsevai in 1666. The relationship between the Jesuits, Adam Weishaupt, and the Bavarian Order of the Illuminati was collaborated with the testimony of Eric John Phelps in the article titled, The Black Pope the Most Powerful Man in the World which he wrote. Eric John Phelps from the Jesuit College of Ingolstadt is said to have issued the sect known as the Illuminati of Bavaria founded by Adam Weishaupt. Its nominal founder, however, seems to have played a subordinate though conspicuous role in the organization of this section. Occult Theocracy, Lady Queenborough, originally published in 1933 on May 1, 1776, the Order of the Illuminati was officially founded in the old Jesuit stronghold of Bavaria. The company would now use the Jewish House of Rothschild to finance the French Revolution and the rise of Napoleon the Freemason with his Jesuit-trained advisor, Ave C.I.S. In spite of the historical writings of the Jesuit Ave Baruel, who blamed the Rothschilds and Freemasonry for the revolution, it was the Society of Jesus that used these very tools to carry out the revolution and punish the monarchs who dared to expel the Jesuits from their dominions. The Jesuits, having been expelled from the Spanish Empire, found refuge in Corsica. From there they raised up their great avenger, Napoleon Bonaparte. Amschel Mayer Rothschild, 1744-1812 in fact the Illuminate as an official body has been around over 400 years before Adam Weishaupt founded the Bavarian Order of the Illuminate. It was first founded in 1492 by the Moranos or Crypto-Jews and known as the Alambrado. Out of the forced conversions and severe persecutions in Spain and Portugal as early as 1391, hundreds of thousands of Jews were forced by the threat of death to convert to Roman Catholic Christianity. Then in the year of 1492 the Jews were expelled from Spain by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. On that very day the edict began for the Jewish expulsion, the 9th of A.V., Christopher Columbus, now known to be a Kabbalist Jew sailed the ocean blue to find the watery road to the New World. Meyer Emschel came from a German Jewish family where he had rabbinic training to become a Jewish rabbi. He took the name of Rothschild and established a banking house in the German city, Frankfurt am Main about the year of 1764. 
Today the Rothschild International Banking Houses are believed to be a major player in the international global crisis that swept the world in the years of 2008 to 2009 and destined to be a controlling interest in the soon-to-rise World Federation of Nations. And so here arrives Jacob Frank to the region of Frankfurt, Germany, the year of 1786. The American colonies had already declared their independence from Great Britain in 1776. The 13 American colonies, now recognized as the tribe of Manasseh that was the 13th tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel, fought their revolutionary war of independence between the years of 1775 to 1783. Signing of the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776 Ten years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, a new alliance was formed in Frankfurt, Germany. These were revolutionary times. What was erupting in Europe quickly was transmitted to America. The seeds of rebellion and the desire for independence and autonomy made the Masonic leadership of the Continental Congress a funnel to soak in ideas of change. Today we see the 2008-9 economic revolution erupting around the world as 44th President of the United States, the newly elected Black Mason, probably the first non-American president, Barack Hussein Obama riding into the White House on a platform of change. He is now heralded in many diverse sectors of the world as the Messiah Obama and the King of the World. If we could see behind the interdimensional veil and behold the hand of the Divine, would we see the finger of God, who was guiding each of these vast earth-changing movements in the moments of their birth? As the United States of America and the Order of the Illuminate were now approaching their tenth birthday we would now know that Adam Weishaupt was only 38 years old, Amschel Rothschild was 42 years old and Jacob Frank was 60 years old. There was no doubt that Meyer Amschel Rothschild was the financier. His desire was to gain control of the world's financial marketplace. Between the Jesuits, that were founded by Jewish bloodlines and the Sabbateens that were now underground Catholics also of Jewish bloodlines, they both would become the agents that could bring the money to the house of Rothschild, the best example of the ancient Jewish Sadducees. Adam Weishaupt already had the structural foundation for an international organization and Jacob Frank was quite adept at laying the mystical foundations. He provided the underground cells for the future subversive acts by the order of the Illuminati. Their primary goal was to roll back the tide of the Protestant Reformation and to bring the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church back into full control of religious and spiritual life in Europe and the Americas. Working hand in hand, the Illuminati and the Jesuits were a powerful coalition seeking to return these two regions back into the fold of Rome. As Barry Chamish wrote in the article titled, Carrie, Gaza, and the new Sabaton, we learn. Barry Chamish Frankfurt at the time was the headquarters of the Jesuit, Adam Weishaupt, founder of the Illuminati, as well as Rothschild Brothers' financial empire. This is worth repeating, Frankfurt was the birthplace of both the Illuminati and the Rothschild financial empire. When Jacob Frank entered the city, the alliance between the two had already begun. Weishaupt provided the conspiratorial resources of the Jesuit order, while the Rothschilds contributed the money. What was missing was a means to spread the agenda of the Illuminati and the Frankists added with their network of agents throughout the Christian and Islamic worlds. Barry Chamish, Kerry, Gaza and the New Sabaton Holocaust, PG2. The George Washington Masoner's Temple in Alexandria, Virginia. Sometime between the years of 1785 and 1786, according to Chamish, the subversive activities of the Illuminati were discovered when a satchel was discovered in the possession of a man who fell off his horse and died. The satchel included the plans for the French Revolution. The Bavarian Order of the Illuminati was banned in Bavaria and this ban swept the European states the Illuminati went underground. It took a fourth party by the name of Franz Thomas von Schoenfeld who under the assumed name of Moses Dobrischka who would take this conspiracy to its final level invade the upper echelon of the hierarchy of the British and Scottish Freemasonry. Bible searchers reflections under the assumed name of Junius Frey, Moses Dobrischka, a.k.a. Franz Thomas von Schoenfeld, became a member of the Jacobins, 
and took the mystical teaching of Shabbatai Zevi to the top of the British and Scottish Freemasonry lodges. The Scottish Rites, known as the Continental Masonry, origins were in European Masonry practiced in the mid-17th century. The constitutions of the Scottish Rite were formulated in 1761, 1762 and 1786. The influence of these rites went global along the trails of British imperialism and practiced today in Europe, North and South America, Asia, Africa, Australia and New Zealand. Scottish Rite Masons First Masonic Inaugural Ball in honor of the fourth President of the United States, Barack Obama By the year of the constitutional formulations of the Scottish Rites, 1786, the corrupted ideology of Sabbat and false Jewish mysticism had now been embedded within Scottish Freemasonry. Is it surprising that 10 out of the 20 signers that left their signatures upon the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons? Scholars have proved that eight signers of the 56 signers of the Constitution of the United States in the year of 1787 were Masons but as many as 30 signers may have been Masons. Many of the signers of the United States Bill of Rights, 1789, were Scottish Freemasons. Is it also of interest that the first ever Masonic inaugural ball ever held was in honor of President Barack Hussein Obama? the 44th President of the United States on January 9, 2009? Is it of interest that President Barack Hussein Obama is a 32nd degree Prince Hall Freemason who was nurtured the by Chicago-based Nation of Islam and the ancient Knight Templar Masons? It is surprising that the anti-Messiah, according to the Muslims, called the Dajjal, according to the Islamic saying, Hadiths, of Muhammad the Prophet is reputed to have one eye. As we look at the back of the United States dollar, we are reminded that the cult of the all-seeing eye is a part of the very foundation of America, the homeland of the tribe of Manasseh. Above the pyramid and the all-seeing eye, we read, Anut Coeptus, God has favored our understanding, and below, Novus Ordo Siclorum, the new order for the ages. Then we are again reminded that the cultic forces of the Sabbat and Jesuit Illuminati were there and have been there all the time, and that reality has now become transparent here at the time of the end. The Rothschild-Rockefeller Connection I want to own nothing and control everything J.D. Rockefeller. The secret to success is to own nothing, but control everything. Nelson Rockefeller The drive of the Rockefellers and their allies is to create a one-world government combining supercapitalism and communism under the same tent, all under their control. Do I mean conspiracy? Yes I do. I am convinced there is such a plot, international in scope, generations old in planning, and incredibly evil in intent. Larry P. MacDonald, the United States Congressman, 1976, killed in the Korean Airlines 747. That was shot down by the Soviets. The real menace of our republic is this invisible government which like a giant octopus sprawls its slimy length over city, state, and nation. Like the octopus of real life, it operates under cover of a self-created screen. At the head of this octopus are the Rockefeller Standard Oil interests and a small group of powerful banking houses generally referred to as international bankers. The little coterie of powerful international bankers virtually run the United States government for their own selfish purposes. They practically control both political parties. John F. Hyland, 1922, then mayor of New York City. Through the 18th and 19th centuries, the two major centers for the Illuminati and the Sabbateens were Frankfurt and London. These two power centers for the global forces in Europe seeking world domination would in 1978 become codenamed by the newly nominated Pope John Paul II as the Golden Internationale. Frankfurt was the virtual financial capital of the world and London was then the political capital of the British Empire and the occultist capital of Scottish Freemasonry. During the 19th century the economic and intelligence highway between London and Frankfurt was heavily traveled, for here were the economic and geopolitical forces that were changing the world during the height of the British Empire. John D. Rockefeller in 1905 
First we see the apostate Jews of Germany, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engel moving back and forth between Britain and Germany as the Communist Manifesto was written. This manifesto, according to Chamish, was used brilliantly by the Jesuits in the early 17th century in the South American country of Paraguay. It was there that the Indians that were not killed were enslaved in communes. For 158 years, more than 150,000 Guarani Indians were enslaved in 30 concentration camps called Reduchines. As international attention was highlighted upon these evil acts, the citizens of Europe were incensed until the Spanish king, Carl III issued a royal decree that drove out the Jesuits from all Spanish colonies. The conceptual breeding grounds for the godless activities of the Sabbateens were established first in Germany and then put into international political movements and organizations coming out of the capital of the British Empire. The political movements of the Sabbateens can be seen in their maturity today in the international military crusades that were pursued by the Jewish Sabbatean neocons of the Bush administration starting in the war against terror in Afghanistan and Iraq during the seven years between the years of 2001 to 2008. The spiritual father of the American neocons was Leo Strauss of the University of Chicago who as a German Jew, according to Chamish, inspired the people who are raping and pillaging Iraq right now. 2004, four young Americans are dying for Sabbateens, in the war in Iraq. Yet, these are the same forces that are shifting their military sites and withdrawing out of Iraq and returning back to Afghanistan now in the Obama administration. Leo Strauss, of the University of Chicago, Sabaton father of the American neocons. With new alliances that appear to be forming between Pakistan and the Taliban, the world may soon be facing a nuclear Al-Qaeda or Taliban. The Pashtun tribes of Afghanistan that are prophetically known as the Bani Israel lost tribes of the House of Israel are prophetically one of God's battle axes destined to destroy empires and nations. God's final judgment is led to be seen in this war. There was one element of the infiltrations by the Sabbateens into the nations of the world that has remained elusive, America and the Rockefellers. The Rockefeller agents of the House of Rothschild did not have any political influence in America prior to the middle of the 19th century. In the 1850s, the House of Rothschild sent John Jacob Astor and Jacob Schiff as emissaries from their headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany to the United States. About the same time, out of the loins of the Frankfurt Illuminati Sabatons there arrived during the Civil War a Rothschild agent from Frankfurt called Judah Benjamin that became the financial advisor to the government of the Southern Confederate States of the United States. Soon the Rothschilds had control of the banking industry in the Southern Confederate States of America. John D. Rockefeller painted in 1917 by John Singer Sargent. The goal of the Rothschilds emissaries, John Jacob Astor and Jacob Schiff, were to take over the America financially for the Illuminati and the Sabbateens. The role of the Illuminati was much more visible than their elusive Jewish Sabbatean sponsors and agents. The first mission of Astor and Schiff was to finance the robber barons who were the major businessmen and bankers who dominated their industries. By the use of unfair and unethical business practices, they amassed huge fortunes. These barons included, John Jacob Astor, Real Estate and Fur, from New York City, Andrew Carnegie, Railroad and Steel, from Pittsburgh, John D. Rockefeller, Railroads, with Standard Oil, Cornelius Vanderbilt, Railroads, Edward Henry Harriman, Railroads, in New York, John Pierpont Morgan, Corporate Financer and Industrial Consolidator, and numerous others. With the financing from the Rothschilds, they were promised wealth, power, control in exchange for the promotion of the Rothschilds' financial interests and the Illuminati's agenda. This was a mutual relationship that benefited both parties. It would be in the year of 1922 that J.P. Morgan and John D. Rockefeller created the Council of Foreign Relations, CFR. It became a front for the Sabaton Illuminati under the control of the Rothschild dynasty. The purpose of this organization, according to Chamish was to overthrow the government of the United States and make it into a country controlled by a global unified order that was controlled by the now almost 350-year-old consortium of the Rothschild's global financial empire, Weishomp's Jesuit Illuminati, 
and the Frankist Sabbateens. John Pierpont Morgan During these same years the Sabbateens were also trying to overthrow Judaism and by overthrowing their Torah and the God in which they served pacify and transform all covenant-keeping Jews into anti-Torah Sabbatan Jews. To corrupt the Jews they sought to corrupt Judaism. Soon out of Germany came the Reform Judaism movement. Later through Germany and Britain came the Conservative Judaism movement. The goal was to dilute Judaism and the spiritual power of the Orthodox Jew would be transformed by spiritual elements foreign to ancient Judaism. The problem existed that Orthodox Jews did not cooperate. They did not rebel, neither did they revolt. They just did not choose to sin against Hashem, their own God. With the defeat of the conspiracy that by twisting the Jewish religion into a religion that would negate their love for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it only emboldened the Orthodox Jew to yearn more for his home in the Promised Land in Israel. So, a new plan was devised called Zionism. Zionism, according to Chamish, was founded by the Sabbateens with the international assistance of the British Freemasons, to take over the land of Israel and convert it into a Sabbatan state. As Chamish confesses, Israel was conceived in utter sin. The Jewish people were given a holocaust by their Sabbatan and Illuminati masters, because that is what it took to force them to go to the land of Israel. In spite of the concentration camps and the ovens at Dachau, the Jewish people still kept being moral. This was a concept that was hard for religious Christians and Western secularists to understand how not to bargain their core beliefs with the devil. It was also hard for them to differentiate between the Sabbatan Jew and the authentic Orthodox Covenanted Jew and realize that the authentic Jewish believers in God are not their enemy and neither were they the killers of the Jewish Messiah Yahshua, known to Christians as Jesus Christ. The same battles that were waged by the Sadducees of the Temple High Priest family of Ananias and the Pharisees of Shammai against the Covenanted Jews during the days when Yahshua, Jesus, was living in Galilee and Judea are being waged today. The virtual reality battle of the Oslo Accord trying to give up tangible assets of land in the nation of Israel to the Palestinians with a mere promise of peace is a war between the good and decent vast majority of Israel and these Sabbateens ruling them. The Labour Zionist Movement of 1880 to 1917 Einstein, What Makes Me Happiest, A Jewish State in Palestine Letter to Paul Aaron Fest dated March 22, 1919 in Physics Today, April 2005. Translated and annotated by Bertram Schwartzschild. I'm very disillusioned with politics right now. Those countries the Allied powers whose victory I thought, during the war, would be by far the lesser evil, now show themselves to be an only slightly lesser evil. On top of that, there's the thoroughly dishonorable domestic politics, the reactionaries with all their shameful deeds in repulsive revolutionary disguise. One doesn't know where to look to take pleasure in human striving. What makes me happiest is the prospective realization of a Jewish state in Palestine. It seems to me that our brethren Stam Janassen and really are nicer sympathisk, at least less brutal, than these awful shoes like in Europeans. Maybe it can only get better if the Chinese alone survive, they lump all Europeans together as bandits. If it was hard to take the morality away from a Jew and get him to blaspheme his own God, it was also hard to get the Orthodox Jews to move to Israel. They could not see any purpose for doing so. Their God had taken the land away from them because they believed of their sins and defiance of their temple and political leaders. They expected to wait until the Messiah returned to tell them to return. The Jewish Karl Marx and the Communist Manifesto. To change the equation, the Sabbateens after the 1880s began to make life miserable for the average Orthodox Jew. First there came the European pogroms of the 1880s, with the special assistance of the Roman Catholic Jesuits, many of which were Sabbateens Jews. The Jesuits provided the militaristic communities and cells called Cossacks and the Sabbateens provided the Communists with Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin. Life in Russia became a living hell and this time the Jews did leave. The Jewish Marxist Vladimir Lenin, 1870-1924 Over two million of the Jews left, but they did not go to Roman Palestine but to America. 
so the Illuminati Sabbatans had to conspire against honorable God-fearing Jews and convince the President of the United States to ban large-scale immigration by the Jews to America. Every other nationality was welcome, but not the Jew. It was the Sabbatans' intent to shut the doors to America so that the Jews would be diverted to Roman Palestine. The Zionist movement was then formed. As we would guess, it was formed in Vienna, German, the ancient hunting grounds of Jacob Frank. The Sabaton movement formulated its first mission and statement of purpose by Sabaton Jews such as Nathan Birnbaum, 1864-1937, and Peretz Smolkin. Nathan was a Viennese Jewish writer and journalist that was born to an Eastern European Jewish family. While he was attending the University of Vienna, he founded Kadima, the first Jewish Zionist student association. He went on to become the Secretary General of the Zionist Organization and became the Zionist's leading spokesman. He quickly became disillusioned and soon left the Zionist movement. The word in which he personally coined, Zionist, Zionism, 1890, and political Zionism, 1892, he learned to loathe as they were transformed into the iconic images of the power brokers of the Sabbateens. They quickly transformed the idealism of Zionism into a party machine. The book, Der Judenstate reputed to have been written by Theodor Herzl in 1895. Peretz, Peter, on the other hand was a Russian Jewish novelist whose life was the life of a ghetto Jew who was first a rationalist and later a mystic. He settled in Odessa as an antinomian, against the law, Torah, which he immortalized in his novels and became known as the Jewish Thackeray. Neither of these two, though, had the charisma to charm, convince, extol, or to tempt the European Jews to move to the Holy Land. But within ten years there arose a new Viennese reporter, Theodor Herzl who did have a magnetic personality and the charisma needed by the Sabbatan Zionists. Theodor Herzl, 1860-1904, became the leader of the Zionists movement and according to his bios, he wrote the book called Der Judenstadt or the Jewish State. This fact was a farce, according to Chamish, for Herzl was supposed to have written it in the summer the year after the Dreyfus affair, but there was one problem, he was not in Paris the summer of 1895. From all appearance, the book was written by a ghost writer. As Chamish noted, Herzl earlier wrote plays and it was obvious that he was a bad writer. But Herzl's charisma made him an amazing leader, so Herzl received a book reputedly written by him. Herzl had a sincere idea to buy Palestine legitimately from Abdul Hamid II, the Sultan of Turkey. The World Zionist Organization liked the idea and sent Theodore Herzl in the year of 1912 to negotiate with the Kashpur Ottoman government to purchase Palestine that was the private possession of the crown. The Sultan refused. If the plan had worked, Chamish was convinced that World War I would have been adverted and the British would not have had to fight the Ottoman Turks to take possession of Roman Palestine. Abdul Hamid II, the Sultan of Turkey refused to sell the land of Palestine to the Jews. So Theodore went to Britain with alternative plans. If the Jews could not have a safe home in Palestine, the Jews could be moved to eastern Africa in Uganda or some other empty land in the Dark Continent. It was a noble move, but it was not destined to be approved by the God of Israel whose only agents to achieve his sovereign will, the Sabbateens were wolves in sheep's clothing, they wanted to take possession of the land of Israel and not Uganda. It was the will of the God of Israel that his chosen land Israel, that was still encumbered with its Roman name, Palestine would come back into the possession of the Jewish people as he promised through the prophets that he would do. With his failed mission, Theodore Herzl's days were numbered. Shortly afterwards, at the young age of 43 years, he died. The story that circulated throughout the Jewish communities was that Herzl's heart stopped because he worked so hard for the Jewish people. The truth was that Herzl entered a Paris sanatorium for unknown reasons, stayed there two weeks and never came out. According to Chamish, Very Chamish, I have no problem believing that he was murdered in there, no problem at all. This is the pattern of these Sabbateens, they eliminate people they don't like. They eliminate people who threaten them. But, I can't prove that, 
Herzl's suspicious death was murder, but obviously, the murder of Israeli's Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, s. death, I can prove. The head of the Jewish Zionist movement was replaced with a German educator called Heim Wiseman. Chamish exclaims, words do not describe the damage this man has done to the world. Now, what we were told is that Heim Weizmann took on the Zionist movement. During World War I, he developed a way to make acetone from dried paint, and that process saved the war. Now, I want you to know, I checked. There was a little factory built. He was a chemist. Not one bomb in World War I used his method, not a one. And even so, the story we are told is, the British were so, impressed about, this wonderful new way to make explosives, they gave him Palestine. This is the myth, you know. This is the myth that we have been raised with. Heim Weizmann, first president of the State of Israel. It was in the year 1915 that the Zionist leader, Heim Weizmann met British Prime Minister Lord Balfour. An interesting conversation took place at that meeting, when Lord Balfour inquired of Heim Weizmann as to the reasons why the Zionists had refused Great Britain's offer of refuge for the Jewish people to live in Uganda. Heim responded, Suppose I was to offer you Paris instead of London, would you take it? Balfour responded, Dr. Weizmann, we have London. And Weizmann responded, That is true, but we had Jerusalem when London was still a marsh. This event was two years before the official British proclamation, called the Balfour Accord that expressed the British Empire's intent to seek international approval for an Israeli homeland in the land of Roman Palestine. Now, Weizmann, according to a secondary document on the life of Albert Einstein becoming a supporter to the Zionist cause, Heim Weizmann that affirmed the earlier remarks by Barry Chamish as to the pride of the leading spokesman for Zionism, Russian-born professor of biochemistry in Manchester, England, when it reported in Albert Einstein's Zionism. Albert Einstein's Zionism having made a crucial contribution to the British war effort, devising a way to synthesize acetone, a TNT ingredient, from cereals and horse chestnuts, Weizmann uses his good graces to lobby for a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The Zionist leader, Heim Weizmann's days were now over. The fate of Ottoman Turkey lay in the decision not to sell the land of Palestine to the Jewish Zionists, and the executioners of that fate lay in the hands of a group of Sabbatan Jews called the Young Turks. Before it was over the world would be engulfed in flames. Hater today. Final days of the labor Zionist state of Israel as the Messiah calls the lost tribes of Israel to come home.